Next up, this one's funny. Uh, because Peter Brandt, he he's a he's another one of those legendary guys, apparently, uh, as far as a trader goes. And uh, he just said, hey, SEC, you got to step in and declare XRP as a security. I don't know. Brandt really has got a thing for XRP. And XRP Army just despises this guy. And uh, I just thought it was an interesting article. So trading veteran Peter Brandt claims that XRP, the fourth largest digital asset affiliated with fintech company Ripple, is actually a security. The only reason why it hasn't been declared one yet by the SEC is the agency's failure to understand the crypto industry, according to Brandt. And this is this gets interesting. So ex-CFTC chairman Christopher Giancarlo, who is a part of the Digital Dollar Project right now, uh, was the one who defined Bitcoin and Ethereum as commodities and declared that XRP wasn't a security back in June. So I'm like, oh, that's good. But the next sentence kind of blows it. It says, his words, however, should be taken with a pinch of salt. Yuma now works for a private law firm that provides legal services to Ripple. So whatever. Ripple's main argument against classifying XRP as security is that the XRP ledger functions independently of Ripple. Owning XRP also doesn't give one stake in the private company. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Where there was a couple of, uh, I th there was a group of six Congress uh, men and women who were talking to the OCC, Brian Brooks. They sent him a letter and said, hey, you know, you really have to step away from cryptocurrency because we don't believe it's it's something that you should really be into so much because of the pandemic. And then I just, I pretty much laid it out. I go, this is just them not being educated on the, on the position. And Brian Brooks is a golden opportunity to educate all of them. And then one of the things that we talked about was, you know, companies can come and go, but the ledger will still say, stay. And then Ripple is one of those people that have always said the same thing. Look, if Ripple goes away today, something happens, uh, XRP will continue to go on because it is decentralized. Now, there's a lot of different uh, people that go back and forth on that, but hey, they do have a lot of nodes. And if you think EOS... EOS is decentralized. There are 21 blockchain producers. Then you got to kind of consider that XRP also is as well. But there's two things I'm going to bring up. First, the Howey test and how that all also relates to securities. And the second part is in the last sentence here, it says, moreover, in his countless interviews, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse insists that XRP has real utility, which is making cross-border payments more efficient. So I read this great book called The Infinite Machine, and it is all about how uh, Ethereum came to be. And one of the big things that they had as far as like a hurdle was trying to get past the, the whole process of being called a security. And what their lawyers came up with is they said, hey, you know what? You have to just talk about the gas and the utility because it is not going to be a security if it has a function, a real world use function, such as they're going to invest in gas and that's what they're investing in, not so much as a, of Ethereum. And that's how they got around the whole security question, which is the same thing that XRP is trying to do going, look, it's not that you're investing and then you're just letting it, you know, just uh, go away and, and we do all the work. Really what you're investing for is cross-border payments and what you're going to use later on. It has the utility. So that is the one part. The second part, is the Howey test. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just want to go over it just briefly because we're not lawyers and we're not going to decide the whole outcome, but it is something to be noticed or to be uh, aware of. So there's four parts that will that will state if a crypto is a security. Four, offer involves a monetary investment. Well, that's check for everything. There is an expectation of profits from the investment. All right, you got me on that one. The investment is in a common enterprise. All right. And any profit comes from the efforts of a promoter or third party. And that's where it gets a little hazy. So what they did is they took a look at, Giancarlo said, well, I'm going to take a look at uh, Bitcoin Ethereum, right? Is there a monetary investment? Yeah. Expectation of profits? Sure. Investment in a common enterprise? Nah, not really. And then profits from a third party. Because it is decentralized, that means that there is no uh, centralized party that is doing all the work and contributing to the massive amount of, uh, of increase or ROI. So they said, nope, Bitcoin's not one of them. They took a look at Ethereum. They said, yes, yes, for the profits and uh, investment and investment in common enterprise. Well, the Ethereum Foundation, sure. Profits from a third party? No, because it's decentralized. And they said, well, since it's, everything's decentralized, you can't say that. Now, this is where it gets good because EOS, they said, yes, yes, yes. And yes, profits from a third party. Yes, EOS, you are a security. And this is what they did. They smacked them down. And this was in uh, 2018, 2019. And they said, look, you raised $4.1 billion. And what we want you to do is pay $24 million in penalties. That's it. So they said, hey, you know, billionaires give us 24 million and they're sure happily. But there is one thing you have to be, have to notice is that EOS is not considered a security. 
because they did this and they said, well, when you did your your ICO, which was a year long essentially, and you guys didn't have a mainnet and you weren't decentralized, you are gonna owe us some money. But after you launch your mainnet and you have your 21 blockchain producers, now you are decentralized, meaning you are not a security. And then it just went away. That's why you can still invest in the EOS and it's not deemed a security. So so look, you know on this channel, uh, sometimes I've not been a big fan of XRP because of the investment and how it really hasn't uh, produced anything. Not that I'm gonna be ecstatic about that, why would I be? However, I'm just too stubborn to sell. But I will say this, I will give credit where credit's due. Here's the validator registry. There's a ton of them. Now you will notice down here that they are, there are some that are actually in Ripple. Of course, they're gonna be a part of that. But there's a lot of other ones out there. So uh, if we talk about like decentralization, sure, you got a lot of validators. If you're gonna say that EOS is, is decentralized or 21, then you gotta go give it to XRP. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section and let's move on.